Hello, this is Christian. Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to do some really simple CRUD operations on our data set here. So this is the site we've been building. I want to make a few changes in here. I don't like the name title. I'm going to change that to say just name because it's a little bit confusing with the title of the page in here. And also I had a typo here. I want to change it to the description. All right. I'm going to also add a button somewhere here to say add a new project. And we're going to add another column over here say something like actions and we're going to uh, perform the edit and the delete uh, links as well okay so again refer to this site here to um, use any of these validation rules if you want to do a little bit deeper into the validation i'm not going to do much other than just requiring the fields and maybe adding the url to the url link um, a tab just to make sure it's a valid url um, that is all i'm going to do okay so let's go back to our Visual Studio Code IDE and make some changes. So again, make sure your app is running. So first thing, let's go to the uh, view first and let's change the portfolio. The title should be name. And then I'm also gonna change the project title to not say title by project name. Okay, we'll make the change in a, in a, so we'll leave this open for now. Now go to the routes under the data files and the data file here. So we're gonna change all the title here to name. So the easier way to do that is basically you select that, press control D a few times. As you can see, it moves down until you find all the fields you wanna change and then just type in the name and all of it will be changed instantly for you. Very cool. All right, and then last but not least, I also wanna pass this data to a session. So the projects need to be in a session because when we navigate away from the project site, uh, from page to page, we want to retain the state, right? So if you don't do that, you're not gonna be able to do um, uh, retain the state. Later on, when we deal with databases, which is a permanent data store, then we don't have to worry about the session, but for now we do wanna do that. So here, I'm just gonna put here session, uh, pass into this session array, projects, the same name, and assign with the projects. Okay, so that's good. And we can close this now. Then over here, this is good. Um, we can close that. And then in the web uh, page, we're going to go and change one thing here. We need to load into the page every time when we um, load data. So in the portfolio here, we notice we use the projects here. It's coming from that product projects page, but this time we're gonna use a session as opposed to this. We want to retain the session. So in here, I wanna do something like this. So project is equal to the session and the session key is really just called projects. Okay. So you wanna load a session every time. Of course, you can check it to see if, if session exists um, first if we do that, um, but uh, that's, that's that's fine. So you, you, you could, could, you don't do that. I mean, let's do that. Okay. Just to be safe. We want to make sure it's actually there. So I want to check it. So that project is indeed exists. Um, and um, I'll keep the project as is. Otherwise, if it's, if the session exists, you can say if the session of the projects does exist, if that's true, and go ahead and replace the project with that at, instead. Otherwise, we'll keep the default, okay? So now I think that should do it. And uh, let's give it a spin and let's see what happens. Refresh the page. Okay, so for, okay, at least, um, well, I need, I need to change that. The ID name is not shown, but let's fix that first. Probably something I missed in the code. Let's go back to um, ID here. Let's go back to the portfolio. I'm gonna change this to say description. Okay. And a project ID, project name. That was not visible. So that means in our projects here, um, somehow it was not set. Session projects. Um, and we load the data already and it should be set. Okay, I'm gonna clear my cache and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna go to storage and the frameworks under the sessions and clear both of these uh, from the list here. 
Okay, so let's start from fresh and load our page and see what happens. All right, it's still not showing. Let's figure out why that's not showing up. And um, my guess is probably I did not update the, um, the data correctly. So let's go back here. I mean, this looks good. I mean, as far as session is concerned, we already imported, so that's fine. Let's look at the data again. We're probably missing something here. Let me close this session for now. And then here we got the name. Um, okay, so maybe the project we haven't changed it. Let's go to the app folder and go to the models and the project. Yeah, in here we need to change this as well, right? We don't call it title anymore, we call it name. So again, just make sure you change that. Control uh, D three times and then name. All right, so that's what it was. Okay, you can close that, change that. It should be fixed now. If you go back and uh, refresh it again. Um, okay, still not going. Let's try cache one more time and come back. Okay, so there it is. Perfect. So now let's add a button uh, right here and the two columns I mentioned earlier. Okay, so back in here in the portfolio page, right above here, the tie table, maybe right below or next to this one here, um, what we're going to add is a table button, or maybe a link. Okay, that points to a, um, a link called add. We're not taking the ID there, and we just put here add new project. There's that one there. Okay, so I'm going to use the bootstrap just to style this. Give it a class called uh, btn and uh, maybe btn primary, just the blue button. Um, and let's see what that looks like. Okay. Okay, looks good. So as you can see, if I click it, it goes here. And I'm gonna add the form right in here, all right? So give me a little bit of room, maybe some margin at the bottom. Um, and then add a column on the right side. Okay, so let's put a margin. Maybe M-4 usually, oh, be too big. M2, that's all around. If you want a bottom, you call it MB bottom. Let's put margin all around. Um, and also, I think that's, yeah, that's good. And then the column's gonna be duplicated. I'm gonna press the Alt Shift down and we'll call this one here, Actions. And then we'll add a new row down here, another TD. So in here we have two links. One is gonna be going to the edit page. It's gonna take an ID field. In this case, it's gonna be the same ID as this one here. So I'm gonna copy this right to this link here. We want to delete or edit this particular ID. And then we'll put here the same um, edit here. I'm gonna duplicate this line, control alt down again. And this will be going to the delete. We're gonna delete one record at a time. So we need ID as well and delete. All right, so I think that should be it for this one. And uh, space here, you can do again, you can format it with um, CSS and things like that if you want to, it's fine. So let's see what it looks like. Um, refresh, perfect. So again, you can make it into a button type, looks like this if you want that. I think that might be a little bit better. So I, I like to do clean stuff, sorry guys. So let's go ahead and add a class. Just like the one above. BTN, maybe BTN small, I think like, things like that. And then we'll put here um, BTN, put, put primary, uh, call it secondary, and the gray one. I'll copy this and put it right to the next one here. Let me close this, has some space. And I will call, this is the delete, so let's use the danger for red. All right, so put margin here, maybe just, I don't know, very tiny margin, again, two. Okay, see what happens. And refresh. Okay, that's, yeah, I'm not gonna play with it. You can, you can make some changes if you want, um, but, 
it's good enough for now. I'll fix it later, but I just want to make sure it's functional. So again, when we do a delete, it's going to go to the delete tab and get ID here. And then the same thing for the edit as well. Okay. All right. And now let's go and do the add here. It's quite simple. And we use the same form as the contact. And we're going to just make some changes in here, right? So let's go to the code again. And now I'm going to duplicate the contact form um, right here. Copy and paste. And we will rename it to add.blade.php. In here, I'll keep this as is. The title will be that one there. This is the name. It will not be full name, but we'll just say project name. Or just name should be understood because we're dealing with project. Here will be the uh, description. And then this is, description will be a text area as opposed to a uh, input. Okay. And then down here is the actual URL. So we'll move things around. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this around just to make sure it's easier to um, type. And then this is the, not message, but this is the description. Okay, and, and the name is good, so we are good to go. All right, and let's see what that looks like. Also, the form should be going to the add, okay, um, the same link as the post. All right, so that's good. Let's go and review the page, portfolio, add, and snap out. Okay, that's good. I did not create a URL yet, but let's go into the web and then add a new form over here. So it's just a get. I'm going to go up here and we'll use um just one of these this one will be fine it's just a very simple view so let's put here this is the add um, yeah so this is for the get only and we also want to do a post so i'm going to copy this one here uh, maybe maybe this one here okay this one here looks good looks very similar to this contact and i'll put right in here this is for the add right coming back from the form, so we better the name. This is going to be the um, description, and this is the URL. So this is will be required, and you put here type symbol URL. So it's a URL, and these are just both just required. All right, and again we'll we'll do some validation here in just a minute. So I'll make sure the the contact. Um, the add one will work. So add, we go to add and say, add a uh, new project. Um, would be the add. Okay, and then down here, just to make sure we go to the, um, yeah, we'll do that later for now. All right, so let's go and see if the form loads. Refresh. Um, title, yeah, I uh, didn't include that. Let's see the title for the ad. You have to include here, uh, not ad, should say title, wrong place. All right, that should do it. Okay, so here we go. And when you click the ad submit, it's gonna go and then uh, has some errors. We already did that, that's good. And here's the thing about the URL. So the email is valid. If you do that, it's all invalid. Um, the email, so the URL had to be like HTTP, I mean, just like that, very simple. It will take it if you just include that, okay? So let's go back and process some data. Now, when the data comes back, as opposed to the add uh, route, we're going to validate the data, just like we did here. And then with this all pass validation, we're going to create a new object and then pass it to the the uh, um, the new or the current object, right? And then we want to send the data the user back to the view, which is the portfolio. So I'm going to do a redirect to the portfolio. That is the return statement. Okay. So when we add, we just need to do um, a new object, and then we'll 
create a new object and we pass that to the URL. Okay, so I'll do something very simple. Um, you can create name fields if you want to, I guess. We do, let's do it, it's easier. Name is equal to, you know what, actually it's already inside the, um, the data, the data object here. So I'll just do really simple here. I'm gonna push it to the, uh, the project, but first you wanna get it from the session just to make sure that you are using the correct um, project object. So you load it from the session first, get the current state, and then we're gonna update this project, right? Array, you're gonna push it, our array, a new, new project, okay? The project here, is the project class that comes from the project uh, class we didn't include here. It will look very similar to the data file, exactly this. So I'm gonna copy this, make sure we import that in here to the very top, um, anywhere here is fine. And then if you look at the bottom, how we do this, exactly same as this. So basically exactly this one, I'm gonna copy this and put it right in here where we create a new project. Okay, and here's, I use the data because it's the same variable name, right? So as you can see, this is the name uh, description and so forth. Only thing is that we do not have the ID. So when we create a project, you can include the ID field. But for my example, I'm just gonna randomize the ID. So before I do this, I'm gonna add a, um, an ID variable here. Uh, you can do that here, or you can just add right in here is fine. Okay, I'm gonna use the random function, rand. And any ID between, let's say, um, I don't know, a thousand up to nine 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 nine. Okay, so in a random variable for the ID, and that should be good. So once you push that to the new project, the project, we then also need to set the session again, right? So we need to update the session of the project to this new updated project. Okay, and then we redirect to the portfolio page. And uh, okay, so that should do it. Let's save and see if this works. All right, so I'm gonna go and just start fresh, add new project, give here um, <clears throat> site uh, one. It shouldn't say email, it should say a description. I'll fix that. Let's say simple website link is http site1.com. Okay, submit. All is good. Now you can see that it's been added to the list here. If I navigate out of that and come back, it is now retained because again, the session is extremely important. All right, so let's change this to um, it's a description as opposed to email and then we're done with this ad. So it would say description. Okay, perfect. So that wasn't too bad. Now the next one is can be the edit. This is a little bit challenging, um, but it was very similar to the ad form here, all right? Because when you do an edit, you want to pre-fill the form. So I'm gonna use the same form as an add, copy that and duplicate it and then rename it to say edit blade.php. Now it's the same, exactly the same form. What we will be to do is we need to populate these with the ID, with the information, right? So in here, I'm going to um, uh, include the value equal to, and then I'm gonna pass and a variable called project, that's a single project, and we pass it the ID, I mean the name into this particular field. Okay, so the same for the other ones. The text area, it needs to go right in between the text here and not in the value. This would be the description. And then we'll do one more for the URL down here. And um, that should be it. Of course, what if you don't have the correct information, right? So you want to show only this if it's valid, right? If, it, if there's no data in this particular um, project, then you shouldn't be showing anything at all. 
So in the very top here, you can put another if directive, say something like, if there is a project, if the project does exist, just like that. If so, you can go ahead and run this form and collapse this, show the form. Otherwise, down here, right? Otherwise, and then maybe put a message here, P, just say um, invalid uh, ID or something, okay? And we'll put a uh, CSS here, text um, danger. Or you can put alert, I think alert danger is fine. Alert, alert danger, so it has a button type. All right, so save this one for now. And then let's go to the web and let's create our edit. Now the edit will be kind of similar to the add. So I'm gonna duplicate, um, no, I can't because I'll need to do some, do some processing. So let me copy this right in here. We'll close this just in case. Okay, so when you edit, it's gonna be a get. The edit, we pass in an ID. We'll make that as required. We need the request. Um, I don't need a request actually. I just need the ID of type int. Leave it out, just ID is fine. I'll leave it int so I know that I'm requiring an integer. Uh, if it's not, then it's gonna be uh, rejected. Okay, so when you edit, um, what do we need to do? We need to find the ID in the projects list. So again, the first thing is going to get the session, project from the session. And you can write a function to do this for you. So you don't have to do this every time, but um, for now, I just do this manually. Okay, I get my project session. And then all I need to do is I'm gonna loop through this project and find it, right? So either I find it or I don't. So I'll set a, a project variable. Initially, I put like set it to null. And then down here, I'm gonna return it to the edit page. So it will be return, uh, view, the edit template, and the data will be just like the other one. Title is equal to the update um, uh, project. I'm also going to pass in the project object. Okay, so that's what I need. Now let's find this project here. I'm gonna do a loop. So for each of the projects, as project, or just call it P, I'm gonna confuse with the project up here. I'm gonna find if the P of the um, ID matches this ID, if that is true, once I found that, then I'm going to set the project to that, right? Set it to P and it will break out of that. So very simple just to find it in the array and then that's good. So that's going to go to the view and get that. When the data comes back, I'm gonna do something similar. So it would be similar to the, to the post right here. I'm gonna copy the post and we'll make this as the post for the edit, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this will say edit. And um, yeah, we'll keep the same ID as well, just like the other one. And then I need the request, I do now, and also need the ID because I need to find it, right? And we'll, we'll update this in a minute. So when the data comes back, I need to validate it exactly just like this, which is good. And then load the session of the project Okay, and then I'm going to, I'm not gonna create a new project though because I'm just gonna update an existing project right in here. And the, 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 this would be the same, right? So what I need to do is search for that project again. I don't wanna do a for each because I need to know the index position. The idea here is to remove, I used to edit, um, to edit a, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, for each is fine. So once you find the project, update it, okay, yeah. So for each is fine. So for each here, 
uh, project as project. And then <clears throat> same thing, if project of the ID is equal to the ID, um, ID, then we're going to um, assign the um, yeah, so the current project name is equal to the data of name. Okay, so you get the idea. Duplicate this, and this is the description. I copy this, make sure I don't mistype my code. Sometimes it's better this way. Okay, so I updated my data and I'm gonna break out this loop, I'm done here. And then I push it back, updated my projects variable, and then I redirect back to the user, which is the portfolio, and that's it. Okay, it's for editing uh, here. We'll see if this is true, all right? So let's go back to the view and check it out. Let's go here. I'm gonna do the edit the bottom here, edit. Okay, so you can see it looks fine. I'm gonna change it to a project two and site two, and I put here site two just in case. Submit, and you can see that now it's been, as you can see, we did not, actually it's an error because we should not add it. It should be just updating to a new project, at the current project. So we made a mistake here. And let's see why in the code, probably a tiny error. Um, should be a post, go to the edit, and um, what do we do here? Let's see, the session. We got that right for each project. And here we match the ID. Once you match the ID, we update the name description. And then we set the session back to the projects. And we drag to the user. Hmm. Um, okay, so the edit here, maybe because we didn't, we did not include the ID in this field. Let's go back to the edit form here. Uh, edit, yeah, I should, it's going to the wrong place. I forgot to update this one. Okay, it should say edit, and then we'll pass in the project ID. All right, it was going to the wrong place. Um, okay, perfect. So let's save this again and go and try one more time. I'm gonna go and do the last one, edit, and we'll change it to project uh, five and submit. And there you go, perfect. Okay, so now let's do the delete. It should be real simple. We'll click a delete. It's gonna go and do the delete operation. And we don't need a view for this, just very simple delete. So uh, back to the web here. Delete will be, you can do right above here. Um, it will be similar to the get ID here. I'm gonna copy this. I will put right above here for delete. Delete, it would say delete. Okay, we do need the ID um, here. I don't need the request. I'm not going through the from the form. So I need to load the session variable and search in the ID. So in this case, I need to know the exact index position so I can splice it. Remember the project is an array of objects, right? So all we need to do is really just find it and then delete it. So therefore I'm not gonna use this one. It'll be a regular for loop. The I of the index starting from zero uh, is less than the count of the projects. And then we'll just write that plus plus. Okay, so in here, if you find a match, if the project projects of i is equal to this id, <clears throat> i of id, sorry, equal to the id, which that means we found it. We're going to go ahead, we're going to go and go ahead and delete that. So we're going to do an array splice. The reason we use the splice is because it will re-index your entire array once it's been removed. 
So the array name is going to be the projects. Position is at the ith position, and we just need to delete one record. And then we break out of that. And then once that's done, then again, I'm going to copy uh, this again. Okay, so same thing. We need to copy the session, update the session, and then redirect back to the user, which is in this case, back to the portfolio page. So that is our simple delete. Um, I, so I actually don't need this project here. We're just basically updating the current uh, project. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see if this works. Go back to portfolio, go delete the last one. Okay, um, all right, so something's not right. I oh, I didn't do the delete um, URL yet. Yeah, so let's do that first. Delete URL, um, rep, delete. Uh, no, not delete, I'm sorry, should be just get. Okay. We're not using a form, by the way. If you, if you are using the form, then you do need to go to the delete. Okay, so there's a difference there, especially if you have not a form, but using like a, um, you know, an Ajax call, okay? Um, we'll create the API maybe later, but why not just a simple get request and we're gonna match the ID and then do the processing. Okay, so that should fix it. Let's refresh the page, a delete. And it should take us right back to the page here. You can see it's going to be moved here. So if I delete all of them, okay, so it looks just fine. And what happens when I delete all of them? Okay, so it comes back again. For some reason, everything comes back. And, and that, should, that shouldn't be the case, right? So if that's the case, then you know, once it's all deleted, when we move that from the, um, the URL, I mean, to clear the list. So we want to say something like in the portfolio here, if the project exists, then we show this. Otherwise, like before, if there's no project, check it again. If projects, then go ahead and show the table. Otherwise, we here have the P message again in class of alert. Call it uh, maybe prime primary, just blue, and then we'll put it. Um, you know what? Maybe that not the alert anymore. Just plain text, just text primary, and then we'll put here uh, no data, no projects to show. Okay, so save this now, and let's try one more time. So portfolio and uh, let's see home contact project okay let's do delete and somehow that's not working so something is not right there let's pick it out and see why so back in our code um i'm thinking maybe because we just didn't include a cache or something um yeah let's let's clear our cache and just make sure it's working i couldn't figure out anything in my code that's not correct so let's again clear the cache and uh, let's do it again. So let's start from fresh, folio, delete. Okay, so there we go. And once we delete all of them, we get the message. Yeah, somehow it's still, it's still loading because um, once we load the message, if we load, go back to the portfolio page, it actually re-updated the actual data. So that's why it's not being deleted which I think is fine, but um, let's see. <clears throat> okay, let's look at one last time and then we will close this video. So when we load the portfolio down here, and this is what happens because we used we used a project here, right? So we the session actually destroyed, but then we already use this default project. That's why it's always loaded in this case. So now I'm going to just remove this Okay, so the project would be empty and in here. And instead of doing this way, I'm gonna go up here and put project as null. It's either null or has something, right? And now that should fix the error. If I'm not mistaken, let's give it a try. So again, refresh, remove all the projects 
And um, now we should say the message is now gone. Okay, so perfect. And that's all for this video. And the next video, we're gonna go look at the controller and maybe some do some database design as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.